we started to use the term marijuana mainly to associate it with Mexican Americans in an effort to vilify the drug because cannabis had been around forever and many Americans were familiar with the effects of cannabis. And so you couldn't make these incredible stories up about cannabis itself, but really they're the same thing. I'm Carl Hart, professor in the departments of psychiatry and psychology at Columbia University. I study the effects of drugs in people. There's so much misunderstanding about drugs, uh, particularly recreational drugs. And today I'd like to clear up some of the information and debunk many of the myths that many people hold. Marijuana is a gateway drug. When we say gateway drug, we mean that using marijuana will cause someone to go on to use so-called harder drugs like cocaine or heroin. When we think about the people who use heroin, more of those people have used marijuana beforehand. That's certainly true. But when we look at marijuana users in total, the vast majority of marijuana users do not go on to use cocaine or heroin or any other drug. So this notion that marijuana is a gateway drug confuses correlation with causation. Correlation are just variables that may go together. If it's raining outside, you may see more umbrellas that go up than when it's not raining. And that's a correlation between umbrellas and rainfall. But no one would say the umbrellas are causing the rain. That's correlation. Causation is when you have a variable that causes another variable. For example, the last three presidents of the United States, Bill Clinton, George Bush, and Barack Obama, all smoked marijuana when they were young men. It would be like saying that marijuana is a gateway drug to the White House. It's not true. That's the difference between correlation and causation. We know for sure that marijuana is not a gateway drug because the vast majority of marijuana smokers never go on to using any other drugs. If it was a gateway drug, then we would have the majority, if not all, going on to try harder drugs. PCP gives superhuman strength. One of the ways PCP acts on the brain is that it interacts with a neurotransmitter called glutamate. Glutamate is the brain's sort of major excitatory neurotransmitter. It causes actions and PCP blocks one of the glutamate receptor. So it prevents glutamate from acting at that receptor. When people actually give PCP to research participants in the lab, you have never seen anything remotely resembling superhuman strength or any of the other sort of effects that have been attributed to PCP like aggression or violence. This notion that PCP causes superhuman strength comes largely from police reports and police stories, police anecdotes, where you may have heard them say that they have to shoot someone 28 times in order to bring them under control. There is absolutely no evidence of that. Can any of these illegal drugs induce violence? And the answer is emphatically yes, in people who are already violent. But in general, the drugs themselves are not producing violence. Drugs are more addictive than alcohol. To be clear, alcohol itself is a drug. Many of the criteria that determine whether or not someone is addicted depend upon the legality of the drug. You have to hide cocaine use because that's not as socially acceptable as alcohol. So all of that impacts whether or not someone becomes addicted to a drug. Once people become addicted to alcohol versus something like cocaine or something like heroin, if they stop abruptly taking alcohol, they can experience alcohol withdrawal. And alcohol withdrawal can lead to seizures, which can cause convulsions, brain damage, and ultimately death. When they withdraw from something like cocaine, you don't get any of these physical effects that can cause death. The same is true with something like heroin. Heroin doesn't cause death upon withdrawal, only alcohol 
of these drugs can cause death upon withdrawal if withdrawal is not done in a medical setting, that is with someone who is heavily dependent on alcohol. The opioid crisis is getting worse. Well, that's not true. In fact, uh, I would even suggest that we were not experiencing a crisis of opioids. Instead, we were experiencing a crisis of ignorance. Whenever we talk about the opioid crisis, we have to differentiate what we mean. Are we talking about deaths related to opioids or are we talking about addiction related to opioids? If we think about addiction, uh, the vast majority of people who use opioids, uh, particularly say prescription opioids, a very low percentage of people become addicted. Something like heroin, where you have the higher sort of addiction rates, and that's about a third at most. That's not necessarily a crisis because very low number of people use heroin. When we think about the overdose crises, if that we want to call it that, we've seen numbers in the United States as high as 70,000 people dying from opioids every year. And that's just not true. The largest the amount of people who die from a opioid-related drug is maybe 45,000 per year. That's at its peak. But when you even go into that number, what you discover is that the vast majority of those people had another drug on board in addition to an opioid, some other drug like a benzodiazepine, alcohol or an antihistamine or something else was on board. So whether or not the opioid actually caused the death we don't know. Marijuana doesn't have any medicinal use. The federal government has a medical marijuana program in which small numbers of people are enrolled such that they receive marijuana from the federal government for free every month in order to deal with some medical ailment ranging from things like uh, glaucoma or some pain. So marijuana has been shown in a number of studies to increase food intake, to decrease pain, and a growing number of other uh, medical ailments are being tested. For example, components of marijuana have been shown to be effective for decreasing seizures. CBD recently has become one of the most talked about compounds in marijuana. We have known marijuana's effects for at least 70 some years or so. In 1944, Mayor LaGuardia in New York City released an extensive study of marijuana's effects and basically conclude what we know now. Marijuana doesn't lead to these long-term negative effects that people have said. It doesn't lead to violence. The LaGuardia report in 1944 drew that conclusion. And it's the same conclusion that research today as the federal government, the Bureau of Narcotics, in 1937 pushed for the ban of marijuana in part because it was associated with groups that we don't like in the United States, Mexican and black folks. It had nothing to do with marijuana's pharmacology. By pushing for marijuana to be illegal or banned or outlawed, what happened too was that the Bureau of Narcotics budget increased. Marijuana is illegal to day at the federal level for political reasons, not pharmacological reasons. There are so many drug myths out there and the myths themselves do more harm than the drugs. Most people don't use drugs, therefore they don't know about drugs. And ignorance is determining how many people think about these drugs, in part because these myths lead to bad policies. And these policies cause increased rates of incarceration and deaths, not from the drugs, but from the policies. It can lead to the dehumanization of, and the stigmatization of people.